Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on the physiology of menstruation. Menstruation is defined as the shedding of endometrial lining after failure of fertilization of oocyte or failure of implantation. And the menstrual cycle depends on the changes occurring within the ovaries and also depends on the fluctuation in ovarian hormone levels, which are controlled by the pituitary gland and hypothalamus the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. This is a picture of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. So the gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus will stimulate the release of luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. Then this FSH will bind to the granulosa cells in the ovaries to stimulate follicle growth permit the conversion of androgens to estrogen, and also stimulate the secretion of inhibin, where the inhibin will then inhibit further FSH release at the anterior pituitary gland due to the negative feedback mechanism. Whereas the luteinizing hormone, LH, will act on the Tika cells to stimulate the production and secretion of androgens. So the production of estrogen will cause a negative feedback on the HPO axis. Low levels of estrogen will have an inhibitory effect on LH production due to negative feedback, whereas high levels of estrogen will increase the LH production due to positive feedback. Unlike estrogen, low levels of progesterone will have a positive feedback effect on the pituitary LH and FSH secretion. So there are two types of cycle during menstruation. And the first one is called ovarian cycle, which consists of three phases, namely follicular phase, ovulation phase, and luteal phase. Whereas the endometrial cycle is also three phases, including the menstrual phase, proliferative phase, and secretory phase. So the words, the phases highlighted in green color is estrogen phase, whereas the orange color is progesterone phase. So let's look further into the ovarian cycle. So there are the three phases, which are follicular, ovulation, and also luteal. So first in follicular phase, the FSH level will increase, while the estrogen, progesterone, and inhibin levels are low. And this will stimulate a cohort of small antral follicles on the ovaries to grow. Within the follicles, there are the thicker cells and granulosa cells. The thicker cells will respond to the LH and produce androgens from cholesterol, where the androgens will be further converted into estrogens in granulosa cells under the influence of FSH. Whereas in granulosa cells, the cells will respond to FSH and convert androgen secreted by the thicker cells into estrogen. And the follicles will continue to grow and estrogen secretion will continue to increase. And when there is high estrogen levels, it will cause a negative feedback on the pituitary gland to reduce the secretion of FSH to help in selection of the dominant follicle. So moving to the next phase would be the ovulation phase on day 14. So when there is selection of the dominant follicle, it will grow and the estrogen level will increase until it reaches necessary threshold to cause a positive feedback on the hypothalamus and pituitary gland and further cause the LH surge, which leads to ovulation. There will be a small rise in FSH-LH-induced luteinization of granulosa cells in dominant follicle, causing a production of progesterone. So the third phase in the ovarian cycle would be the luteal phase. After the release of oocytes, the granulosa and thicker cells in the ovary will form the corpus luteum, where it will undergo extensive vascularization to supply the granulosa cells with rich blood supply for continued steroidogenesis. So if there is no beta HCG present, the corpus luteum will regress when there is no fertilization and no pregnancy. And the matured corpus luteum is less sensitive to LH, so it will produce less progesterone and will gradually disappear from the ovary. 
and withdrawal of progesterone will then cause menstruation to occur. Next, let have, let's have a look at the endometrial cycle, which is divided into proliferative phase, secretory and menstruation phase. So during proliferative phase, there is glandular and stromal growth. So the epithelium lining of the endometrial glands will change from a single layer of columnar cells to a pseudostratified epithelium and the endometrial thickness will increase rapidly and become very thick at the end of proliferation phase. Whereas the second phase is the secretory phase, when the endometrium reaches the maximum thickness. The endometrial glands will become tortuous, and spiral arteries will grow and fluid is secreted into the glandular cells and into the uterine lumen. And then later on, the progesterone will induce the formation of decidua in the endometrial stroma. So before menstruation phase start, there will be three layers that can be seen on the endometrium, which are the basal layer, mid-portion layer, also known as stratum spongiosum, and superficial layer, the stratum compactum. So when there is fall in estrogen and progesterone levels around 14 days after ovulation, it will lead to loss of tissue fluid, lead to vasoconstriction of spiral arterioles and also distal ischemia. It then causes tissue breakdown and sloughing of the upper layers, which is the menstruation phase. This picture is a summary of the overlapping of the phases of endometrial cycle and ovarian cycle. So you can see ovarian cycle, there is a follicular phase, ovulation and also luteal phase. Whereas endometrial cycle, there is the proliferative phase secretory phase and menstruation at the middle column over there. You can see how the thickness of the endometrium grows and then gets slough off during menstruation. And this graph also shows the level of the FSH, LH, estradiol and also progesterone levels during each phases. So this is another table showing the three phases. So if you look at the actions of pituitary hormones during the proliferative or follicular phase, the ovarian follicle growth is stimulated by the FSH. Whereas in secretory or luteal phase, the estrogen will stimulate LH surge, causing ovulation and development of the corpus luteum, like I mentioned just now. So whereas the effects on endometrium are listed over here. During the proliferative phase, the basal layer will proliferate and give rise to a new functional layer. Secretory phase will reach the maximum thickness. Endometrial glands become active and coiled. Stroma becomes edematous. And during menstrual phase, the functional layer will be sloughed off, whereas the basal layer is retained. So that summarizes this whole presentation. Thank you.